Module 3, Metaphysics, Lecture 3C, Materialism. Materialism or Materialistic Monism. Materialism teaches that everything is matter. The entire universe is simply particles of stuff moving in space, according to the laws of physics. Materialism is very popular today, particularly among scientists and philosophers. In fact, one can surmise that most scientists although certainly not all are materialists. Thomas Hobbes, 1588 to 1679, was the first of the important materialists in modern philosophy. And we will discuss Hobbes when we study political and social philosophy. People simply follow their emotions and passions. Life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Karl Marx was also a materialist who saw everything as a result of economics, of money. He built his theory on Hegel, so Marxism is often called dialectic materialism. But the idea of materialism goes back to the ancient Greeks, such as Democritus, 460 to 370 before the Common Era, and Romans, such as Lucretius, 99 to 55 before the Common Era. The problem with materialism where does consciousness come from? Many say that consciousness is simply the result of brain activity. The mind is merely the brain. If the mind is simply the brain and the brain works by the laws of physics, then the mind also works by the laws of physics. This would mean that everything is determined. Simon Pierre Laplace, 1749 to 1827, taught that there was a demon who knew the velocity and momentum of every particle that demon could predict the entire future of the universe and retrodict the entire past, known as Laplace's demon. If this is true, can we even talk about ethics? How can we say that anyone is responsible for their behavior? There are three attempts to understand mind based on a materialist point of view. Three materialist theories of mind. Behaviorism. Behaviorism is based on the work of B.F. Skinner, 1904 to 1990, but its roots go back to Pavlov's famous experiment on dogs. Science only teaches what can be observed. We can observe behavior. We cannot observe inner subjective states. Scientists cannot know mind exists. Only behavior exists. Philosophers speak of philosophical zombies who behave as if they have no minds. They do not. We raised this issue when we spoke of solipsism. Only my mind exists. No one else's mind exists. No assumptions are valid about what's going on subjectively to cause this behavior. Behaviorism is built on the assumption that mind does not exist to speak of mind is to speak of behavior, the only thing we can know scientifically. British intellectual Alan Turing, 1912 to 1954, was one of the greatest minds of the 20th century. He helped break the Nazi Enigma code and helped invent the computer. Sadly, he committed suicide after being arrested for homosexuality. To learn about Turing's life, see the 2014 movie, The Imitation Game. Turing invented what computer experts call the Turing test. If a computer performs in a way that you cannot tell the difference, whether it is a computer or a person, then for all intents and purposes, the computer is a person. We simply look at the behavior of the computer and don't assume there's any inner mind there. So far, no computer has passed the Turing test. Could we can build a computer with an inner subjective experience we call mine? It is an open question. I believe the answer is no. But if a computer can be mistaken for a person, then a person can be mistaken for a computer. Mind-brain identity theory. Mind does exist, but it is simply the working of the brain. Eventually, if we learn enough about how the brain works, we can describe the mind. If we say that Jack is proud of his paper, we are simply saying, Synapses A, B, and C are firing in Jack's brain. Perhaps this was best expressed by the biologist Francis Crick, 1916 to 2004, who
who co-discovered with James Watson the double helix of DNA. Crick wrote in his book, The Astonishing Hypothesis, you, your joys and sorrows, your memories and ambitions, your sense of identity and free will are in fact no more than the behavior of a vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecules. One of the most quoted thought experiments to challenge mind-brain identity theory came from the Australian philosopher Frank Jackson, born 1943. He imagined a scientist named Mary who had been raised from birth in a black and white world. He pictured Mary raised from the beginning in a room where everything was deliberately kept black and white, including her own skin. Perhaps a better possibility is she was colorblind, totally, unable to see any colors at all. Nonetheless, Mary was the foremost expert on the physical properties of the color red. She knew exactly what wavelengths of light caused objects to be red, what part of the eye responded to that red, how the brain processed red. She knew everything about red. One day, Mary had surgery that allowed her for the first time to see red. Suddenly, she had something new, the subjective experience of red. Jackson pointed out that seeing red is something more than mere physicalism, mere materialism, something subjective. Philosophers call these subjective experiences qualia. How can we explain through pure physics the quality of seeing red, tasting coffee, feeling pain, or for that matter, falling in love? Functionalism. Mind is not a substance as Descartes taught, but rather a function of the matter that makes up the brain. Such functions can be realized by a human brain, a computer, or some other physical medium. The American philosopher, psychologist William James, who invented the phrase stream of consciousness, first said that consciousness is not a thing, but a function. Just as digestion is the function of the stomach and circulation, the function of the heart, so mind is the function of the brain. If the brain is like the hardware of a computer, the mind is like the software. It's how it works. It allows the hardware to function, but has no existence outside the hardware. Many consider Aristotle a kind of functionalist because he considered mind a kind of spirit that animates the body. My favorite challenge to the functional theory of mind comes from the philosopher John Cyril, born 1932, in his famous Chinese room thought experiment. Cyril imagines a man in a room being fed Chinese characters through a door. He has a book of instructions how to react to all those various characters he has fed. If he receives various characters, he passes out through the door other Chinese characters. The man is following instructions. To an outsider, it looks like the man in the room is speaking Chinese. The problem is the man does not know a word of Chinese. In linguistics, syntax is the rules of grammar. Semantics is the meaning. The man in the Chinese room is able, through rules, to deal with the syntax of Chinese, but he has no idea of the semantics of Chinese. Likewise, a machine like a computer or a human brain can function by certain rules. With computers, we call it an algorithm, but there's no inner mind which understands what is happening. We've seen three attempts by materialists to explain mind, behaviorism, mind-brain identity theory, and functionalism. There are problems with each. Both philosophers and scientists have not found a satisfactory explanation for the existence of mind. Dualism, idealism, and materialism all raise issues to one of science's most perplexing questions. Why do we have subjective experiences? Why do we have qualia? What is mind?